great day to be in Arlington, Texas. It is definitely a thrill every time I come into the stadium, right? Like a world-class stadium. And this is basically the second home for the Mexican national team after Estadio Azteca. So we've been here often. We've seen it all. And it's going to be a fantastic atmosphere for the final four of CONCACAF. I'm joined right now with Philippe Mojo, Secretary General for CONCACAF. We have a great day planned. We'll have a conversation with him. Then we'll talk with uh, the four coaches of the national teams. Uh, so I want to welcome you all. And uh, thanks for having me. This is a great event. And also, I want to welcome all the people that are tuning in via Zoom on social media. So welcome everyone as well. I'll have a conversation with Philippe. Then I'll have a conversation with the coaches. And then we'll open it up for questions from the press as well. So let's get the ball rolling. Thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate you having me here. Philippe, how are you doing? Good morning. Good morning, Alejandro. It's great to see you. And uh, on the contrary, thank you for being with us here today for this great experience. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be very exciting. And uh, I want to talk about the final four of the CONCACAF because this is the third edition of the tournament. So what would you say, uh, Philippe, is what are you guys more excited about in this third edition of the final four of CONCACAF? Well, first, let me start uh, by thanking our coaches uh, for joining us today. I also want to thank the... Dallas Convention, um, Sports Convention for receiving us here and, and for hosting us, and certainly AT&T Stadium and, and the Cowboys organization for, for hosting us. Um, it's great that we're bringing our Nations League finals here to Dallas, to AT&T Stadium. Uh, it's been a tremendous competition for CONCACAF, and we're so excited to be able to, to bring it here. Uh, even though it, it only started in 2019, yeah. we're into the third edition, and there's been some great football, uh, some great stories uh, coming out of it. And heading into these finals, we have four fantastic national teams represented by our four coaches uh, here today. And there's a lot on the line. The U.S. has won the last two editions. Yeah. Uh, so there's obviously a lot of momentum, and they're going to want to continue with that momentum. Mexico's coming in very strong, having won our CONCACAF Gold Cup. And certainly, uh, Jamaica and Panama played so well in the group stage. Uh, so there's, there's obviously a lot on the line here, and it's going to be great to see who wins uh, the next uh, third edition of the CONCACAF Nations League. It's going to be a great atmosphere, um, starting the 21st of March, by the way. So um, how do you think this tournament has transformed the region and CONCACAF? Because today we're talking about the Final Four. But this is a tournament where more than 40 teams participated in. Yeah, this competition has been uh, a game changer for, for CONCACAF. And it has been transformational. And the reason why we say it's been transformational is because we have to take you back to what we had before. We, as you said, we have 41 member associations. And before, during a four-year cycle between World Cups, they would be competing in World Cup qualification a lot of them would play maybe two matches home and away, and if they lost, that's it. They would be three, out, three years out before the next World Cup, uh, sitting idle at home and not really having the opportunity uh, to play. Uh, they wouldn't be fen fielding friendlies. So this competition has given all the 41 members of the association the opportunity to compete consistently during a four-year cycle, whether it's World Cup qualification or whether it's through the Nations League. And that has uh, helped us develop the sport. We believe that competition fosters development. So having that opportunity for them to, to uh, compete consistently, uh, we believe has really helped all the member associations. And with the structure that, the way it's designed, there's something for everybody. You know, we have promotion relegation across the three leagues. So there's the opportunity to continue to advance. There is the opportunity to uh, form a, a continuous calendar during a four-year cycle. And there's obviously great competition at the top. And now heading into the, the third edition of, of the finals, we have had now, with Jamaica having qualified, seven different teams uh, qualifying into the final four. So that shows you that the system is working, that, uh, that diversity allows more uh, member associations to compete for that top prize. And, and obviously, we think that it's going to really deliver dividends over the long period of time as we see our, our member associations improve. And I'm sure it will. Uh, so lastly, Philippe, we talked about the stadium, the venue, the atmosphere, the fans. What can they expect from what will be 
I'm assuming a fantastic week of football played starting March 21st. Well, certainly the Dallas metropolitan area has a fantastic soccer culture, fantastic fan base. We have played many Gold Cup matches here and have had always a, a great experience. AT&T Stadium is one of the top venues in the world. Uh, they're not only hosting our Nations League, but they have nine matches for the World Cup in 2026, including yep. a semifinal. They're hosting also uh, Copa America. So there's clearly a track record of, of uh, great soccer being, being played here. And in addition to our Nations League, we also have four teams competing for the last two spots of the Copa America this summer, the two spots from CONCACAF that will, rep that, um, will be representing CONCACAF in Copa America. So those are uh, two matches, Canada against Trinidad and Tobago, and Costa Rica against Honduras. Those matches will be also played here in, in the Dallas metropolitan area in Frisco, in Toyota Stadium on uh, March 23rd. Uh, so that, uh, in addition to the Nation League finals, really is gonna put together a fantastic week uh, of football here, and I'm sure the Dallas fans are really going to enjoy it. It's guaranteed. Thank you very much, Philippe Mojo, everyone. He will be available for press questions, by the way, um, later on today. But what do you say if we uh, welcome and introduce the coaches of the four national teams that will be participating in the Final Four? Thank you very much, Philippe. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you. And we have a special guest, by the way, in Brandon Aubrey, best kicker in the NFL, if you ask me. He will be joining on stage later on. But for now, let's welcome Tomas Christensen from Panama, Jaime Lozano from Mexico, Coach Hal Grimson from Jamaica, and Coach Perhalter from the USA. I will give you the mic. Yes. Yes. And I'll step over here. Um, wherever you want to sit is fine. So first of all, um, welcome. And thanks for being here. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, I will be doing or conducting the uh, questions in English for some of you and in Spanish for others. Um, but we'll figure it out. So no worries there. Um, it's going to be a great conversation. I'm going to start asking a question for each, and then we'll open up the conversation for the press as well. Let me start with you, Greg, because uh, the USA, we know, is a two-time defending champion of the Final Four of the CONCACAF. So what would you say is the most challenging part of defending a title like this one? Well, first of all, um, I think back to the last two tournaments and some amazing games, amazing spectacles. Um, the, the first game in, in Denver, the final against Mexico was a great final. And then last time in Las Vegas against Canada was another great final. And for us, it's really respecting our opponents, respecting the level of competition. Nations League is a fantastic tournament, and there's four high-level teams here. So for us, it's staying humble, focus one game at a time, but really, um, you know, desperately wanting to get our third title. Yeah, and you guys are going through something that Mexico went through, which is, um, since you've won it twice, people expect for you to win it again. So if you do win it, as expected, but if you don't, all hell breaks loose. So that kind of pressure, I imagine, isn't, isn't easy to handle, Greg. It's high expectations, but it's something that our group embraces. Um, we have very good players, and you know, we have high expectations for what this program can do, not only in Nations League, but in, in Go Cups, Copa Americas, and eventually in the World Cup. So we welcome that. Vamos ahora con Thomas Christensen. Gracias por estar acá, técnico de la Selección Panameña. Como hace muchos años yo no había visto un nivel de entusiasmo con la afición de Panamá, ahora que está tan enganchada con el equipo después del gran trabajo que han venido haciendo, ¿qué significaría para ustedes, eh, Tomás, ganar su primer título a nivel de CONCACAF? Hola, buenos días a todos. Eh, gracias por la, la invitación. A ver, nosotros eh, no pudimos ganar esa Copa Oro en la final contra México. Eh, esa era lo más cercano que podíamos ganar un título. Ahora hay otro título en juego. Nosotros queremos venir a, a competir, intentar mostrar el mismo nivel que hemos eh, ido haciendo en, el, en los últimos tiempos. Y, y la verdad es que, como dice Greg, eh, son grandes equipos los que, los que estamos aquí y, y hay que pelearlo con todo y, y sobre todo con mucha ilusión y humildad. ¿Hace falta ganar ese título para dar ese salto de calidad que han estado buscando en los últimos años? No hace falta, pero por la ambición que tenemos 
eh, en el cuerpo técnico, los jugadores, eh, la afición, que también ha crecido con, con esos últimos eh, resultados, pues queremos dar lo mejor de, de nosotros y, y por qué no soñar con, con ese título. Gracias, profe. Nada. Vamos ahora con el entrenador de Jamaica, coach Halgrimson. Thank you very much for being here. So, Jamaica has been getting closer and closer. You guys have played Gold Cup finals. Um, what does this tournament, Nations, uh, CONCACAF Nations League and also the Gold Cup, mean for you and your team? How valuable are these kinds of competitions for you guys? In terms, think, in terms of growth. Yeah, yeah thanks, for, thanks for having us here. So for, for us, it means, for us national team coaches, it, it means that you have time with the players. Normally, especially here in, in the CONCACAF region, when you have players coming from all over the world, you lose normally one day of training yeah. compared to, for example, when you, when you are playing with a European team, with the European players, everybody is, is ready to train on Monday. So normal FIFA window gives you maybe two trainings in a game and a two trainings in a game. So you basically cannot spend a lot of time with the players. Um, tournaments like these and uh, Copa America in, in the summer gives the coach a month with the players so you can, you can grow the team faster, you can gel them together and the, and the players will interact better on the pitch, staying together, knowing each other, not only as a football player, as, but as a person. So that is really helpful to build a, a team for the future, to have, have this time. So for, for us, it means a lot to have tournaments like these. How close are you, do you think, of that breakthrough win that Jamaica has been looking for? <laughs> Two weeks. <laughs> I like how you think. <laughs> And it was a great comeback, by the way, against Costa Rica. So congratulations, coach. You've been doing an amazing job. Jaime Lozano, entrenador de la Selección Mexicana de Fútbol, que viene llegando a Europa, una gira para visitar a los mexicanos que están por allá. Eh, Jimmy, esta es la cuenta pendiente que tiene México, ¿no? Eh, es donde ha venido perdiendo la hegemonía en la región, eh, particularmente frente a Estados Unidos. ¿Cómo recuperarla y qué significa este torneo para Selección Mexicana? Hola, buenas tardes a todos. Sí, eh, como bien dices, México históricamente eh, era uno de los candidatos principales a ganar cualquier torneo de la zona. Ahora el crecimiento de unas elecciones, evidentemente Estados Unidos que que tiene un gran potencial y que se ha hecho eh, dueño de este torneo, por decirlo de alguna manera. Nosotros tenemos toda la ilusión, las ganas, evidentemente, de, de ser los primeros como selección nacional en levantar eh, este, este trofeo que, que tenemos pendiente con toda nuestra afición y evidentemente con nosotros mismos. Eh, le vamos a dar toda la importancia, sabemos que las miradas y, y el entusiasmo están muy puesto también en el verano, en lo que será Copa América, pero para nosotros es realmente importante el proceso, ¿Cómo, cómo llegamos en ese proceso eh, de cara a lo que será el 2026. Entonces, vendremos con lo mejor que tengamos, eh, pondremos toda nuestra atención en sacar, evidentemente, buenos resultados, ganar partidos y te puedo decir que la cabeza de todos está puesta en Panamá. Y para sorpresa de nadie, presión máxima siempre, ¿no? Con selección mexicana y con este tipo de torneos, es ganarlo sí o sí, algo que nunca se ha hecho, pero esa presión se siente y habrá que, eh, con poco tiempo de trabajo, pues cumplir con las expectativas. Jaime, ¿cómo se maneja esa situación? Sí, siempre sabemos lo que representa para todo el país. Sabemos que, como lo decían hace rato, que somos prácticamente locales en este estadio y, y hay que mantener la energía positiva. Digo, habrá muchísima energía aquí antes del comienzo de, de, del partido, en la medida que el, que el jugador, que el equipo... Eh, pueda proyectar eh, buenas sensaciones a, hacia la gente, pues evidentemente que esa energía la mantendremos. Entonces hay que buscar siempre eso, ¿no? entregar todo lo que tenemos, evidentemente buscar siempre hacer buen fútbol y más allá de eso, ganar los partidos. Bueno, pues en juego estará la famosa etiqueta del gigante de la CONCACAF, ¿no? a partir del, del 21 de marzo. Um, thank you, thank you for the conversation. Let's open it up to um, some questions from the press. I don't know if anyone has anything to ask. Uh, we have microphones going around, so uh, if you just want to raise your hand and then um, go ahead and say your name and then um, whatever you want to ask to whoever you want to ask it to. Al profesor Jaime Lozano, soy Jesús Padilla de Furia Deportiva Hola, TUDN Texas. Profesor, en su reciente visita a Europa, donde estuvo viendo a los jugadores de la selección, um, ¿Qué trae de interesante? ¿Qué, ¿Qué fue lo que consiguió allá? ¿Están ellos considerados para el plantel que estará jugando la Nations League? 
Y finalmente, ¿sabía usted que incluso la selección mexicana tan juega de local en este estadio que posiblemente este año tenga hasta cuatro partidos en este escenario? Porque son los dos de Nations League, porque luego viene el, la posibilidad de tenerlos en la siguiente etapa de la Copa América y porque hay un partido comprometido que se juega cada año aquí en este estadio del de, de Mex Tour. Sí. Hola Jesús, ¿cómo estás? Sí, la verdad que el viaje es un poco para saber cómo están. Nos hablamos muy seguido, yo mensajeo mucho con ellos, hago llamadas para saber cómo están, cómo van. Es un periodo de mucho corte, desde noviembre hasta marzo para la fecha FIFA. Y era un poco eso, saber cómo están, saber conocer un poco más su entorno, en qué podemos ayudarles, que sepan ellos que ser seleccionado nacional no solamente es en fechas FIFA, sino durante todo el año. Entonces, estar un poquito a disposición de ellos... Eh, eh, a mí me tocó en este caso viajar a todos los, eh, los países, los equipos y estar con los jugadores. Mi cuerpo técnico estuvo un poco más haciendo eh, pues visitas a clubes, a entrenami viendo entrenamientos, viendo entrenadores, pero estamos, estamos contentos. Y lo que dices de Leite Antí, sabemos, sabemos que es la segunda casa de la selección nacional, que normalmente nos sienta bien este estadio, que va a haber una gran expectativa, gran ilusión por, por ver a la selección de México. Y bueno, eh, también sabemos que estamos frente a selecciones muy potentes. La última vez que enfrentamos a Panamá fue un partidazo en, eh, en California y que no será fácil, ¿no? Cualquier partido eh, va, va a tener su grado de, 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 de complicidad y, y bueno, sabemos que tenemos que hacer las cosas muy bien para poder llevarnos la semifinal. Sí, prácticamente, bueno, en una semana tendremos que dar la lista y casi seguro, ¿no? Hay algún jugador ahí con... Tenemos dos, tres jugadores que están con algunas molestias, que no están del todo bien físicamente y dependerá un poco de eso. La lista okay. de 60 se reduce a 23, 23 ¿no? sí. A 23, correcto. Ok, um, next question. Anyone wants to ask anything? Por allá. Gracias. Good afternoon. Uh, Felipe Cardas with The Athletics. Questions for Greg. You mentioned respecting opponents and having been in this stage now, two-time defending champions. What have you noticed from this new look Jamaica side? What are some of the strengths that have come about under this new uh, coaching staff? I think very good defensive organization, um, the ability to counterattack, very good on set pieces. And, you know, I think the most important thing is it's a resilient team. You see, they, they lost in Jamaica to Canada, and they had to go away to Canada and, and get the victory. They went down in the game and they still were able to come back and win. So it, it's a very strong mentality. It's a group, you can tell the coach has been through major tournaments before, um, very experienced coach, very organized team. So again, for us, it's gonna be a difficult match, but we're excited because difficult matches will help us grow. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Over here, Pedro Silva, Innovation Dallas for Coach Halgrenson. Uh, coach, if you could talk a little bit about the game, in this case, for what's going to be United States like as a rival. And also, uh, as far as Copa America in your group, you also have Mexico, Venezuela, and Ecuador. If you could talk about the level of competition of that group as well, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, first of all, thanks for the question. First of all, um, U.S. and Mexico. Uh, we, of course, if we want to do something, we have always to face these two powerhouses in, in CONCACAF. So, that's, that's the ultimate goal, to, to get as close to them as, as possible. I think we have played more, or I have played more games against Mexico than the US, but hopefully the gap is, is getting smaller and smaller in regards to Jamaica close, closing the gap uh, to them. So just the importance of, of playing these big matches, is, it always helps the players to grow. It's one thing to play a match, but when it's a lot in, at stake, you know, it gives so much more leverage to, to these matches. And the ultimate goal for us is to get to the World Cup in 226. And again, this, these kind of tournaments, these kind of games help us. Um, Copa America, it, I, I think our group is, is quite equal, uh, probably the most equal group. So it's just to be ready on match day for, for those matches. I think all teams have a chance to, to, to qualify from the group. It's, it's not going to be a runaway leader. Uh, or winner, and it's not going to be a team that all the others will beat. So it's just to be ready on on match day, whoever you face. But it's, I think it's it's a physical opponent, so we have we need to be ready for that. Uh, quick, aggressive teams, all the, all our opponents in, in Copa America. So yeah. Thank you, coach. Carlos Nava, ESPN International, eh, para Thomas Christensen. Eh, profesor, ¿qué tan importante va a ser a partir de este marzo, con el verano que sigue también ya clasificados a Copa América, 
para el desarrollo del fútbol de Panamá y qué tan importantes son los resultados precisamente en este par de torneos para que Panamá pueda dar el brinco al siguiente nivel, también ya pensando en el próximo eliminatoria mundialista. Hola, buenas. Eh, para nosotros todo torneo donde nos clasifiquemos es importante para Panamá. Eh, también financieramente esa clasificación para la Copa América pues hace que podemos trabajar, invertir un poco más en nuestra propia liga, que tenemos que, que aprender a exportar jugadores al extranjero, jugadores que, que se hagan luego importantes en sus equipos eh, para luego sumarse a, a la selección absoluta. Y bueno, estamos en, en ese proceso eh, y, y intentando contribuir todos eh, en lo máximo para, para crecer como, como equipo. Y están construyendo un centro de alto rendimiento, ¿no? También van bien con eso allá en Panamá, según tengo entendido, ¿no? Sí, estamos en, en ello, están todavía con, con movimientos de tierra, pero sí. bueno, la ilusión es que, que esté cuanto antes sí. para que lo, lo podamos aprovechar, ojalá lo podamos aprovechar antes de, de las eliminatorias de, del, del Mundial. Eh, ahora tenemos dos en junio, que, que no va a estar, pero a partir de... De verano esperemos que ten, tener unos campos para, para poder ir. Crecimiento en todos los sentidos. Adelante. Micrófono, por favor. Buenas tardes, profesor. Tomás Cristian Sengales Vanegas para el programa Acción Centroamérica. Y si puedo también hacer una pregunta para el profesor Luzano. Por favor. Eh, profesor Tomás Cristian, ¿es presión adicional enfrentar a la selección conocida como la favorita en el área de CONCACAF para la selección canalera por una segunda ocasión en un torneo tan importante? Y profesor Lozano, eh, ¿Es la clave esa lo que usted está haciendo ahora, el acercamiento que tiene con los jugadores que ahora volvemos a ver finalmente a una selección mexicana con garra en el terreno de las acciones? Bueno, personalmente para mí es un aliciente más enfrentarnos a, a México. Tenemos todavía eh, en la memoria la, la final perdida de la Copa Oro. Yo no he ganado a, a México en ningún momento eh, y para nosotros... Es importante eh, este, este partido que, que nos viene. Eh, lo bueno es que, que venimos con, con un aprendizaje. Eh, vamos a jugar, digamos, como fuera de casa, con este estadio lleno de, de mexicanos. Pero también lo estuvimos en, en esa final en Los Ángeles con 80.000. Y eso ha sido una prueba de, de fuego para, para mis jugadores. Y, y van a estar ahora con con esa experiencia y esos conocimientos a, a lo que nos espera y, y va a ser un, un buen duelo. Sí, eh, evidentemente ayuda, son seres humanos, están en Europa, están a veces algunos de ellos solos, entonces el, el, te digo, el poder saber cómo viven, qué necesidades tienen, qué están pensando, es mucho tiempo entre una concentración, una fecha FIFA y, la, y esta de marzo, entonces es importante que ellos eh, pues se puedan expresar, un común donador estando con ellos y platicando, es quieren, quieren eh, expresarse, quieren contarte cómo se sienten, cómo están, qué les falta, en qué están bien, es una experiencia distinta, ¿no? el simple hecho de ir a otro país, tenemos no tantos como, como algunas otras selecciones jugadores en Europa, pero, pero esa es la intención, que ellos van a cumplir un sueño que muchas veces desde México no lo ven así y muchas veces si no juega es para qué fue si no juega, pero es, es forjar también carácter. O sea, el jugador mexicano que está allá tiene que forjar el carácter, tiene que competir como uno más, que no pasa mucho en la liga, porque si eres un seleccionado nacional creo que tienes muchas concesiones en el día a día y estando allá, para mí los hábitos son totalmente otros que los que tenemos en la liga, que tenemos que aspirar a esos... A esos este, esos valores y a esos eh, hábitos para poder, en verdad, conseguir cosas importantes. John, por acá. Gracias. John Arnold from Getting CONCACAF. Just wanted to ask, Greg, you mentioned the pressure at a team level of coming in with a favorite tag or defending this title. I wanted to ask about you personally, you know, with the growth of the game in this country, with those trophies, seems to come more and more expectation, more pressure. What have you done to sort of compartmentalize maybe external factors and criticism that, that seem maybe stronger around any U.S. team than, than any in history because of the interest and passion that fans have now? Yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I think it's great that there's a lot of interest in soccer in America at this time. I think it raises the level. When I look at our group in particular, um, you know, it's, it's all part of it. The guys are playing for big clubs, clubs that they have to win every single game, so they're used to that type of pressure. And for us as a group, we know that, um, you know, we want to achieve a lot. And anytime you put yourself out there, 
And any time you have really high expectations, um, you know, there comes a lot of pressure, and that's just all part of it. We work really hard on um, minimizing that, staying in the present moment, and really focusing on game to game and doing the best possible um, game we can each and every time we have the opportunity. Do you feel as a favorite for this tournament, Greg? I mean, do you, do you welcome that responsibility or do you not see it that way at all? We have a semifinal that we want to win and then we have a final that we want to win. It's simple as that. It's not, it doesn't matter who the favorite is. We're all competing for a trophy and we all want to advance in the semifinals. We all want to win the final. That's for us to discuss, right, in the press. <laughs> Alguien más? Alguna pregunta? Okay. Sí, sí, por favor, por favor. A profesor Christensen, este, ¿sabía usted que la última vez que se enfrentaron en este estadio, México y Panamá, ganó Panamá dos goles por uno? ¿Cree que se podría repetir la historia? A ver, no, no, lo, te, no lo sabía, pero sí que... La última vez que estuvimos en, en este estadio fue en, en, en cuartos de final contra, Canadá, eh, con, contra Qatar, que ganamos 4-0. Así que, si es así, pues eh, que la historia continúe y, y que hagamos un buen partido, pero complicado siempre contra, contra México. Hay buenos indicadores, ¿no? Acá tenemos una pregunta. Buenas tardes para el coach Jimmy Lozano. Este, soy Guillermo de Persiguiendo un Sueño. Este, ¿Crees que es obligación para México ganar este torneo? Digo, si le preguntas a la afición, seguramente te, te dirán todos que sí, evidentemente. O a la prensa, ¿no? O a la prensa que sí, <risa> eh, pero nosotros queremos salir cada torneo a competir lo mejor posible, evidentemente con la ilusión siempre de ganar, de ser campeones, pero lo han dicho todos, hay cuatro selecciones muy fuertes, las dos que más han crecido sin duda alguna y por eso están aquí y llevan haciéndolo bastante bien desde hace tiempo, Jamaica y Panamá y Estados Unidos también que desde hace tiempo ha tenido un gran crecimiento, ha sido protagonista y, y que lamentablemente para nosotros pues hemos eh, perdido eh, los últimos encuentros contra ellos. Entonces, eh, no sé si con, se sea nuestra obligación, pero tenlo por seguro que la mentalidad del grupo va a estar en primero avanzar sobre Panamá y después ver lo que, lo que viene adelante. Paso a paso y partido a partido. John, ya para ir cerrando la, la conferencia y después eh, pasamos a, a una sesión de fotos, ¿no? Y algunas sorpresas que tenemos preparadas. Venga. For Coach Halgrimson, uh, you know, you, you had your friendly recently with Trinidad and Tobago giving a lot of young players debuts. I'm sure most of the squad will come from the teams that you've been calling in, guys that are based in Europe or other leagues. How do you kind of face the challenge of putting a squad together when you have players from kind of disparate places. You have players that are born in Europe, raised in Europe, developed in those academies, players from the island, some players in the U.S. What's it like to try and meld that together when you're going into a tournament where you have to have your 23 best players on the list? Well, I, th I think it's no different from us or, or the other coaches. Um, you just have to have a clear working environment that you can gel the players in together in a short period of time. Of course, it, it would be better if Jamaica, Jamaica would have um, like better resources than, than we have, uh, more finance behind. It's a it's, it's big difference for, for me and, and Thomas compared to the other two guys here in, in, in regards to the Federation you know, possibilities. So it would be nice to travel and meet the players. It would be nice to, to do a lot of things, but we just have to go with what we have and do the best of, from, from what we have. So it, it's a gap we need to, we need to bridge. But I, I think it's the same problem for, for, for us, like all the other coaches. You, know, you, you just have, as a national team coach, you have a limited time to, to, to assemble a good squad and a good team. Okay, so um, I think we're pretty much done. Thank you guys. This was a very valuable conversation.